Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to be checking out the Lavo 6 TP tent by the Norwegian company, Nortent. Let's get to it. So if you watch my winter clothing video, you'll notice that I'm wearing my level one pants, my level two jacket and my level three hat. And the reason for that is because over the course of the last 48 hours, the temperature has fluctuated between minus five and minus 25. Uh, last night it was very cold and we slept in the tent. Me and my son are out here camping. He's five years old. So I brought out the Mr. Heater as a backup. I'm used to camping by myself. This is the first time I brought my son out. So I brought out the Mr. Heater. If it was just me, you know, I'd be fine to, to rough it out throughout the night. So I'm using the Winterwell Titanium Ultralight Folding Stove, which is only three pounds. Great little stove, but it does lack some of the better qualities of a larger wood stove that have the thicker steel that are gonna, you know, stay warm longer, aren't gonna radiate heat as fast, but uh, it seemed to work quite well. How's it going? What's wrong? Are you cold? Are you cold? Are you cold? Are you cold? Dogs. Sun. Stuff. Ceiling. Wood stove. and hot chocolate. So there's a lot of room in here. This is the Lavo 6. Lots of room. But it, they say it's a six man, and you know how these tents work, right? Six man really means three man. Three man really means one man. Unless you're really used to bunking up. Got some hot chocolate cooling down there. We've got a lot more space here. We got a chair there. So it's hard to tell you how much space there is, but I'm fully standing up right now. And you know, I can barely reach the top here. And I'm about 5'10, so. Hey, how many girlfriends are you gonna have when you grow up? 100 billion thousand. What? Dude, I can't even handle one. How are you gonna handle 100 billion thousand? Extended camping or even short term comfortable camping in winter weather really does require a wood stove and a hot tent. You can get four season winter tents that don't have a stove jack built into them, but really you're gonna spend the majority of your time in the tent immobilized by a sleeping bag unless you have some other means to heat your space. When it comes to winter camping, the wood stove is everything. It is the heart and life force of your tent. When that fire goes out and it's minus 30, it's only a matter of time before the life force escapes your body. Fire is life and your ability to harness its thermal properties is essential. Not only that, of course, you can cook on it and you can boil water in it. I've demonstrated several wood stoves on this channel throughout the years. One of the last titanium wood stoves that I demonstrated turned out to be a real dud. It was very finicky to set up. You had to be very delicate when you used it and it just wasn't built for real abuse and long-term use. So in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating my new combination ultralight system, which is comprised of a Nortent Lavo 6 tent, which is made in Norway, and a Winterwell fast fold titanium wood stove that is made in the USA. Now, I would certainly not recommend a titanium wood stove if you're not into ultralight backpacking, but coming in at four pounds and being very easy to assemble, this is far and away the best ultralight wood stove on the market today, bar none. Winterwell, however, also makes some fantastic wood stoves like the Nomad that actually has a side view so you can see what's going on 
from the side. I hope to do a review on that one in the future. And those are the kind of wood stoves that you're going to use for long term. If you don't have to transport your gear too far, you might as well take a heavier duty wood stove that you're not going to have to be as careful with and will be capable of receiving larger logs. One of the biggest inconveniences of this ultralight titanium wood stove that I'm showing here is that you have to make sure that your logs are cut less than a foot. That way you can fit them in on an angle if they're bulky or if there's coals bunched up in the back. The great thing about titanium is you can have a very thin stove, which is ultralight, which is going to be able to withstand much higher temperatures than normal steel. If you had a steel stove, which was this thin and this light, it would not be able to withstand a lot of abuse. It would quickly warp and be unusable after probably a few uses. Now with the stove, you get the fast fold stove body, which is really easy to assemble. A few latches and you're good to go. This is very important when you're in the field and you have cold fingers. It also includes a rolled stove pipe. This is not a design which is unique to this stove. It's a feature we're starting to see in more and more of these stoves and it actually works quite well once you get the hang of it. You want to make sure though that you burn these stoves in especially the rolled stove pipe because that's going to make it much easier to set up in the field. It also comes with a spark arrestor, a tent protector sleeve, and a few pipe rings and of course a carry bag which I don't care much for because it doesn't fit the stove in its entirety which is kind of stupid but that's not a deal breaker for me but I really do think they, they could probably do some work on improving the carry bag so it actually carries the entire stove but it packs down really really small as you can see here and really lightweight compared to the size of a normal wood stove which tends to not compact down anywhere close to this. Now you can also use this stove without the lid on it. So you can use it as a portable fire pit in areas that have stricter fire regulations. So this is a unique feature of the stove that you can actually take the lid off. You can't do that with most wood stoves. Now, as you can obviously imagine, these are gonna be very expensive items, which I would only recommend to somebody who is gonna be using them a lot and somebody who likes to travel and pack light. There are plenty of videos online that show you not only how to make wood stoves, but you can also make a teepee tent out of a simple tarp and a stove jack. Once again, it's not gonna be as convenient, lightweight and functional, but if you have the time and the wherewithal to make something like that, all the more power to you. For all the other space age outdoorsmen, this review is for you. The Nortent TP tent has some unique features that you're gonna notice right away. And I just noticed that the quality of this tent was far superior to my seek out sign tent. Most of these tents like this, the reason why they're so expensive is because they have a silicon coating on the nylon. That gives the tents greater waterproofing and durability. Most companies will only put that silicon coating on one side of the tent, but Nortent puts it on both sides of the tent. And you can really feel that in the ripstop sill nylon fabric, that it's a thick, very, very durable fabric. It comes with a 30 millimeter aluminum pole, which telescopes out to around seven feet, and it is adjustable so you're not limited to having one size. That's one of the other great things about this design is you can have a lower profile, wider surface area tent if you want to. So if you're a person who's short and doesn't need that seven foot stand up space, you can significantly reduce it, use the guidelines to uh, give yourself more width. It, it will just require a larger footprint to put the tent down in. Now the maximum weight of this tent with the poles and the guidelines and everything included is going to be about 3.7 kilograms or approximately 8 pounds. So an 8 pound tent with our 4 pound winter well titanium stove, 12 pounds for a portable shelter which will not only keep you alive, which is the most important thing, but actually be a comfortable wilderness experience. I believe the Seek Outside Ultralight tent was around 3 or 4 pounds, but in my opinion you do lose a lot with that weight so it's worth carrying something that's 12 pounds and in winter time you're probably not carrying that on your back you're using a small sled or a pulk so 12 pounds isn't really a big deal when you're pulling it on a sled pulling a hundred pound sled is much easier than carrying it on your back you also get some aluminum tent stakes and i brought out some of these msr winter tent stakes which actually work surprisingly well now to be honest in winter time if you're staking into snow you may do just as well with some larger sticks all the MSR stakes do is that they provide a larger surface area, albeit one that is flat that you don't get with sticks. But still, if you didn't, if you lost your stakes, you could still use uh, sticks just as easy. So this is a very simple design. There's not many poles. There's not a lot of things that can get broken, which lends to its longevity and its durability and just its ease of use. 
There really isn't much that can break on this tent, and it's a very efficient design in terms of its ability to endure the elements. Snow, wind, and rain are just going to circumvent the tent. In my personal opinion, the teepee is one of the better designs. Now, one of the advantages with a dome tent is that the heat gets distributed a little bit better. What happens often in a teepee tent is a lot of that heat really does go up to the top. So if you're in a high profile teepee tent, a lot of that heat is going to be in the upper third of the tent where you're probably not going to be for most of the time. You're probably going to be sitting or especially if you're laying down. This tent does come with a ground sheet and an optional inner tent that you can use if you want to keep the bugs out in summertime, if you want to keep the inner space of the tent a little bit more organized and clean. And the ground sheet is compatible with a wood stove. There is a cutout that the wood stove fits perfectly into and is meant to accommodate the coming and going and loading of the fire so that you're not going to wear down that part of the ground sheet. So you have your living space uh, which is what the ground sheet would cover. And then you have your working wood stove space, which is not covered by the ground sheet. I can't say enough good things about the Nortent Lavo 6. It's probably one of the more durable tents like this on the market that are in this ultralight class, but still a very durable, exceptional materials. Now, if you're looking for a tent that you want to make as a home base for an entire season, you can't really beat canvas in terms of its long-term durability, but that comes at the cost of it being an incredibly heavy material. A lot of canvas tents also require more intensive setup. Some require you to use materials harvested from the land. This is great if you have time and resources at your disposal, but if you're on the move or you want something that's ultralight, nothing beats Sil Nylon, especially the teepee. It, it's far superior to an A-frame design of most canvas tents, in my opinion, when it comes to its ability to manage snowfall. You can get teepee tents, which are made of canvas, of course, and, and the original uh, tents which were used by the Native Americans were of course made of buffalo hides But they also had whole teams of seasoned nomads within their community who could manage the transport of those types of heavy materials Over that unbroken terrain most people today simply aren't cut out for that level of challenge I prefer the TP design the Nortent also make one that they call the Gamay and that one is a circular dome like shape and I prefer this one just because of the easy setup. Well, one of the benefits with the dome shape is that you perhaps have more usable space because the sides are taller, uh, whereas this is kind of sloped. But you can see that there are several guy line points throughout the entire TP tent. So if you were to really use all those lines, you could really maximize the size of this tent. So it's very sizable inside. Uh, you may want to go with the Lavo 4 if you want a smaller footprint. That's one thing to consider with these tents is that they have a very large footprint so it is going to require a large flat space but as far as the durability of the fabric uh, obviously it's a bit heavier than the seek outside but it's still fairly lightweight for what it is uh, for a four season tent now the build quality is exceptional it, it's double stitched everywhere uh, i didn't uh, actually waterproof it yet just because i don't plan on using this tent in the summer or the spring Maybe in the spring a little bit, but mostly in the winter time. And for winter, I don't really need it to be waterproof. I just need it to be sturdy enough. And this is a very sturdy uh, design, the teepee design. The snow is just gonna fall off to the sides. And it's also very good for wind. The wind will just go around it. And because there's so many stakeout points, there's about 20 places to stake it on the bottom there means it's going to be very stable very stable platform and it's only one pull so that's what i really like about this tent is that it's really easy to set up and you don't have to you know mess around with poles and stuff like that when your hands are cold so that's why i prefer the the tp style design the gamay however is a nice tent we're going to be getting those in stock in march they've been out of stock for a while the winterwell stove has a spark arrester on top there or a spark catcher and it doesn't always catch the sparks so I did burn a couple holes in this thing already which really sucks it didn't happen until the third night so I had the fire roaring pretty good last night and there was a lot of coals in there so that may have been part of the reason why and I actually seen it I seen the the flash and it was a fairly sizable hole that it put in it nothing I won't be able to repair but uh, that's not really the fault of the tent that's 
more so the fault of the Winterwell stove. And you can get additional spark arresters for the titanium wood stove. So that's probably what I'm gonna have to do in the future. There's some 3D windows on there that are made rigid by a wire that goes through them. So that's kind of nice. So you're always gonna have that ventilation. Uh, lots of these tents just have the windows that kind of fall flat or you have to pull them out with guy lines, but not with this one. So that's pretty good. There's also a ground sheet in there, which I'm using, but uh, it does certainly help to keep the tent a little organized on the inside. If you've ever slept in a tent like this, typically there's no bottoms. And that's because, you know, typically you're putting it right on snow and you know, you're gonna put your cot up or you're gonna clear the snow out of the way. So you're gonna be right on the bare ground. But this one does come with that ground sheet. And I actually like the ground sheet. It, it takes a bit more work to set up. It's gonna be an extra 10, 15 minutes of work. And it's gonna be a little messy, you know, but once you have it on there, it's kind of nice to have a, a dry tarp like bottom. Not necessary, once again, because you can just use a tarp, but definitely comes in handy. And the top that the pole sticks in is really, really durable. That's what I like about this tent. It's almost like a foot and a half in diameter and uh, just a really aggressively tough material. I'm not sure if it's like a, I don't think it's a leather, it's some kind of uh, rubber fabric, but uh, really, really strong stuff. Now there's definitely gonna be some condensation buildup in the tent when you don't have the wood stove going, but you know, you get the wood stove going for a couple hours and it tends to dry up. Uh, as you can see, I have the bottom of the tent covered with snow that just prevents any wind from coming in from the bottom. I would say it was a pretty warm experience, like relatively speaking, uh, much warmer than it was in the seek outside tent at equivalent temperatures. And I still didn't use any thermal reflective liner on the inside. You can actually get an inner tent for this and I do have it. Uh, we do sell them actually also. I brought the Mr. Heater out as a fail safe because when I was getting everything set up, uh, wanting to make sure that he stays warm in there because, you know, it was about minus 15 when we were setting up. So, you know, he has a good jacket and stuff like that. But uh, until I get the wood stove set up, use that to keep him warm. And then uh, throughout the night, we had it on also. So just because it's hard to feed the fire at night, you know, you can keep a low burn, but it's not really going to do much. Uh, I will say, though, that the wood stove is much hotter than the Mr. Heater. So, you know, one of the benefits of a wood stove over using a Mr. Heater is that you're gonna get a lot more heat, even though it's not as consistent and, you know, it might not be as convenient. Uh, nothing beats the wood stove in terms of radiant heat. There's also an adjustable vent right here that I'm not using. It would be nice if this was wired also, uh, so you didn't need to actually prop it out because these can be a pain in the ass. Not incredibly hard to do, but just a bit more work. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Lavo 6 by Nortent and the Winterwell Titanium Wood Stove. Please let me know in the comment section if there's other gear that you'd like me to try to get in to review for the channel. I'm always looking for the latest and greatest and always interested in checking out new innovations in the wonderful world of survival and camping gear. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Canadian Prepper out. And don't forget, uh, you can get both of these items at CanadianPreparedness.com. And use the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER for 10% off. Take care, guys. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.